getting ready for another run. Pulling the boat towards it. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Tuna! Beautiful, well done mate. Fucking boat Alright, first run was about 400 yards. Hi. I'll lead you to it, but I'll keep out of your way. All right, mate. Have a good one. Give us a shout if you need anything. All right. Some drag on this reel now. Woo! Yeah, baby! Well, you need a harness. Going up high. I'm pretty sure I saw it on the surface about five minutes ago, about 300 yards back. Ready now. <laughs> Good 
She was hanging really deep. The thing that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to tire it out, out there, so that I've got more time to react if it starts running in a direction. I don't want to try and play it underneath the boat because I've got a chance of finding a prop and snapping me off. What that happened before? Now, I had come out here with the intention of poor beagle fishing. And literally, I hadn't even got a chance to get my chum bag over the side. Look, chum bag's still here with the chum in the bucket. Put the first bait over, turned around. <laughs> it's just a marathon now. I've got him out at about 200 yards and there is a lot of drag on this reel and he's taking a bit and I'm gaining a bit and he's taking a bit and I'm gaining a bit and pretty much he's towing the boat sideways on at nearly a knot I wanted to try and guide him out to sea because there's less crab pots out there. If I go anywhere in there, I'm going to be dodging wrong fishing gear, which I don't really want. Maybe persuade him that going that way is going to be easier for him. I might stand a chance. <sighs> Just hanging deep. about three quarters into the fight now three quarters of an hour into the fight now he's a smart fish you can tell that he's stinking he'll try running fast high that doesn't work he'll go deep and stay deep and dog that doesn't work he'll run side to side try running at the boat they are smart fish Tied on down here, so I couldn't spin round. So he's heading towards the boat now. He's up high in the water. I've got about 250 yards out, and I can see the line on top of the water to 100 yards away.
if I get him to the boat inside two hours, I think I'm doing well. I've just seen some mackerel jump about 300 yards away, so he must be just under the surface over there. Of course, I can't steer and drive straight at him. I've got to go like a diagonal towards it so you can keep the fish out away from the boat and yet still gain on it. Thinking about it, thinking about it. That was a mental run, he was like 200 yards over there. And he's just gone whoosh, straight under the boat and got the other side now. Incredible, he's towing the boat backwards against the wind. Travelling at one and a half knots backwards against the wind. Let him tire himself out a bit more. See it kiting along. It's on the surface, I can see it on the surface. See it about 200 yards back. There it is. Down here now. That's a fucking big fish. <laughs> Pardon my French. It's about five foot long. I hope you saw it on the surface splashing around. That's a big fish. It's just give and take. You gave him the line back and you let him take it under drag to tire him out. Oh, he's up on surface again. You see him there, look. See the two dorsal fins up on the surface. I hope you can see that. See, just there. Want me 50, 60 yards away. That is mental. Pinwheeling now. <laughs> Tell you what, insane dry mouth now. 
try and get a little bit further away from it and see if I can draw it in up high. If we can get hold of the leader, we might be able to get a gaff in its lip. Oh god, I wish I could find my water. This guy's the boat. Get some pressure, get it to the boat. Come on. What is that crafty fish? This one keeps running for the boat, keeps trying to get itself underneath the boat. Cheeky bugger. Currently 245 feet of water, drifting at a, a knot, being dragged at a knot. Being very, very sneaky at the minute. It's hanging down deep, down near the boat, and it keeps diving for the boat. Turn that ratchet off. I can see the leader, 30 feet behind the boat. The fish is only 30 feet behind the boat. There it is. That is insane. Still taking line, listen. Time is it? One and a half hours in. Uh, the absolute key to anything like this is you need to be prepared, you need to have everything ready because I can't do much when I'm steering the boat and playing a fish at the same time Come on lad, get you alongside Dragging it up in the water column now. These fish are constantly swimming. They never stop. So that's why I'm just dodging the boat ahead. Just so I can kind of keep pace with it while I bring it towards me. It's got to be tired out now. Got to be. Water's gin clear, I can see colour. God, this fish is ridiculously big. And away it goes. I think it's just got a second wind. 
straight down to the bottom. See what I mean? How they think. You can see that they're trying something. You could see it tried going far and high, then tried running towards me and then came in, tried upon the surface. Now it's just gone right deep. There is a lot of pressure on that rod and reel now. Tuna busting over there as well. Real tight pinwheels now. I Means just going round and round. See the line going round and round in the water. That's an 80 pound stand-up stick, hooped right over. Trick is when fighting any decent fish, you need to keep the rod bent. Not only so you can keep the hook tight, but while that rod's bent, it's taking, it's taking energy out of the fish. So when you get this far into a fight, you're just thinking, God, I hope I'm not tall. I don't really like having it deep so close to the boat. Quick dart and it can run underneath the boat. Get up! Get up! Shear water's everywhere. Wish you could see there's just hundreds of shearwaters everywhere. Tuna passing below the boat, see him on the echo sounder. Go on, let's get you up high. Get you up high, come on. Oh, there it is. Oh my god. It's up on the surface about 30 yards away, sideways on. He's ready to come to the boat now. I hope you can see it. See it there coming in just sideways on. That is amazing. Give me that leader, I'm gonna have you. Give me that leader. Come on. So close now, so close. Got 24 leader and the leader's on the surface right in front of me. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, come on.
close. Oh, I nearly had me then. I've been inches away from that leader. Oh. Come on, give me that leader, give me that leader. No, 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 no. Thanks to that. Right. My God. Can you see that fish there? Look at the size of that fish. What an absolute monster! Can you see how, how I'm dodging it up into the water? So there's water going over its gills. Can you see it swimming towards me? That is incredible.
just look at the sheer size of it, look, compared to my hand. Right, it's pretty well revived now. Give it one more swing round. Right, pretty well revived now. There it goes, look. Well, I've just about calmed down. Still a little bit, I'm still checking like hell. That was incredible. Uh, I've been lucky enough to, to have caught some fantastic fish in many places in the world. But I can tell you definitely, nothing compares to that fish on my own, in my own boat. Uh, fighting it for just over just over two hours, about two hours and 10 minutes. Um, the bait was, was literally in the water, two minutes. I just had chance, I was out for poor bagels, I hadn't even had chance, look. I hadn't even had chance to get my chum bag out, look, my chum block's still, still in there frozen. Literally just got my bait out, was just feeding it back like that, was getting all my gear sorted, moving everything out the way. Next minute I knew, Brah! picked the rod up and it just went. I didn't get a chance to turn the camera on, I, I hope, gods, I hope that the footage is okay. I mean, usually I'm quite a quite a collected guy. I'm quite calm. That was mental. I hope the footage is good. First first run was 400 yards, and I had to chase it. And then ever since that, it, maximum was about 200 yards. But I tightened up hard on that fish. Um. God, yeah. Glad my hooks held. Glad my knots held. It was um, phenomenally lucky. I did to the surface too. Look, oh, got some dolphins coming in here. I don't know if you can see them. Oh. That's, oh, that's lovely to see. Yeah, it was just crazy. Uh, let me think. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wiped. Using a using an eighty pound stand up stick, the Tiagra thirty, eighty pound braid, and a. Uh, 200 pound rubbing leader. Oh, they're lovely. I can't tell you an awful lot about how I caught it, only about how I played it and landed it. Just because it wasn't an intentional capture, I was out poor beagle fishing. There have been a quite a few poor beagles spotted around here. Uh, maybe next time we'll get some porgies. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed the video. Like I said, I hope it's been all right. Um, well, I'm hooked up again. Might have to chase this one. He's up high in the water, about 300 yards away. Yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm hooked into another one. I know, I was, I was on my way home. Hooked up 20 feet from the side of the boat. Yeah, Andy's about maybe 100 yards away from me in Anglo. All right, love you.
Dolphins all around the boat. That was a tuna there just in front of us. Two dolphins, literally, here. Just see it sitting there on the surface, about 200 yards away. See it's dorsal out of the water. <laughs> Mate, you don't gain on these fish inside the first hour. This one's massive, this one is a really big one as well. I mean, this is, that, that's my Tiagra 30 maxed out on drag. And it's towing me round at 1.7 knots against the tide. I was going to say I have about 200 yards out, but now it's more like 280. Right. I'm about half capacity on my reel. Now, the first run it had nearly emptied me. Yeah. Yeah, well, I've, I've got... I've got 600 metres of braid and then I've got about 100 yards of uh, mono backing. Engine running in case it, it, if it runs for me, I can run a stern or run forward and get around it. But yeah, at the minute it's it's not too bad because the wind's not very strong and I'm running against the tide. So the fish just dragging the boat around, tiring it out. Ah, come on. Running towards me. Yeah, I don't expect I'm going to be landing this fish any time in the next hour. This is a monster. This one, I saw it take the bait. Andy's about maybe about a mile and a quarter away. No, well I've, I've phoned Jeff as well, I've just said, look, I'm playing a fish, if you get your boat launched, you can be out here before I land it. Right, I'm going to have to go, darling, I love you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to go, Wayne. A big tuna bush just in front of the boat. That was a big one. And again, whoa, it's incredible. Oh, they're everywhere. Regret having so many clothes on now. <laughs> just hanging there. Just hanging there, holding, pulling us against the tide. Oh! <laughs> 
coming towards me. Just try to stay on top of it. That's a big fish. Christ. Just come and see, come to have a look at me. You can see line cutting through the water. God, it's incredible. The only problem is because it's high up and it's close, he could be across my stern, he could be across my bow in a second. Just having to kind of try and keep an eye on him. I can just to see, see a bow wave that he's creating. I can see he's about 50 yards away, just up ahead of the boat. Do I look knackered? Because I am. Oh, that's better. See what I'm doing now. Straight off the back of the boat now. See there, look. See the boil, what he's causing. You can see the colour. Coming up, coming up. He's a smart fish, this one. That was incredible. Went all the way from the distance, come up high, maybe only four or five foot below the surface. Right around the back. It's about that round, and literally it's got to be seven or eight feet long. Look, he was nowhere, nowhere near ready. Just coming up to have a look at me. You never know, he might have even been hooked before. He, he might know how to get the hook off. In for the proper, in for the bottom. Yeah, smart. If something doesn't work, you can see that they'll hold there and think, alright, I'll try something else. That's why I'm better playing it out out there. I can see him, I can see a bow wave he's causing, it's just sitting down deep. I keep seeing it coming through on the sounder at about 80 feet. We're in 215 feet of water. And all he's doing is he's tried a few things. Tried running, tried diving, tried running towards me, tried running around the boat, tried circling up high. And he'll just be holding like this now while, he, while he's having to think about it. Trying to make sure I keep solid pressure on it. Circling now. See the line doing that in the water. Every inch of line at the minute is hard earned. Turn the ratchet on. So that I can hear when it's speeding up or when it's slowing down. If you don't have the ratchet on, you can't hear it, you can just see it. It's easier to gauge how fast it's going when the ratchet's on. Not far now. It's a hell of a lot of algae in the water. My hands are getting covered in it with online. I'm having to keep an eye out for fishing here. There's a trawler just over there.
Come on! Lead up! How big? 79 inches. 79 inches. What was his girth? <laughs> Do you want me to get in the water and measure it? No. You sure? Yeah. I'll get in, I'm not bothered. I'm half sand eel. What's your steering mons? John, far working here, a uh, tuna instead of a shark. We'll take that today. It's just released, gone back all safe and good. Lucky, good job. Well revived, John. Right, if I was tired before, <laughs> if I was tired after that first one, that second one's completely ruined me. I'm just, just a wreck. Can't, can't probably, can't talk properly. Uh, that was mental. Funnily enough, actually, one of my friends was coming past, pulled up alongside and let me measure it. That one was 79 inches from like its nose to its fork. I don't know what that is in, in like real money weight size, but I'll try and get it calculated when I get home. Uh, yeah, it's uh, again just over two hours. When I've, I've just checked on the GPS there, that fish towed me for three miles. Uh, half of it was against the tide and that's in a straight line so it's probably even further what's crazy I just uh, put the put the gaff underneath its chin and towed it along with the boat doing a couple of three knots to revive it that way you're forcing water over its gills because it's, it's tired out and as soon as they start rippling like that I hope hopefully it shows in a video as soon as they start rippling like that you can pull the hook out and they're just they're away that one there was not messing around but oh, crikey mental um what <laughs> just a, a really 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 lucky accident poor beagle fishing i don't know i saying that though i would have liked a poor beagle but i'm not going to complain about catching them so it's <sighs> i probably missed loads I, I probably should be saying all sorts i just kind of think properly um I'll head in now, it's it's about midday. I'll uh, head in, go and check my crab pots real quick, and then we'll go home. But, <laughs> as if we're doing this in the UK, as if there's them. It's absolutely criminal that we can't target these properly. We'll see you later.